Why does Teofimo Lopez suck at cutting the ring off? In this episode of We Fight How We Train, we're going to be taking a look at why Teofimo Lopez struggles at chasing people down. Uh, some of the top few reasons why. We're going to be looking at his shadow boxing and some of his mitt work. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and start with the shadow boxing. Now, one of the most obvious things is he moves around with his hands down. All right. Now, that might be super obvious or not that obvious, but if it's if your opponent is fast and they're snappy and your hands are down, it's very easy for them to interact with you. It's very easy because you have to respect anything that they do. If your hands are down here in this position and your opponent makes a lunging motion at you, you got to protect your face. It could be anything, right? You don't have any guards up. You you can't control what side of the line. You don't have any feints or probes. Um, and when you find yourself in those positions here, right, where your hands are not protecting any of your head, you never really, sometimes you know, you know, but it becomes very difficult to interact with things correctly. Uh, but most importantly, at a high level, people aren't just doing one punch or one move at you. They're going to do two or three. It's very important. As we saw, <clears throat> we're just going to take a look at that clip here with Teo. Even when he gets on the line with Jermaine here, getting on the line with him here with the lead hand, Bob. And he's throwing one, two, three, three little snaps to land one punch. Okay. Now, if we take a look at this clip here, as he approaches the line, notice his left hand is not just down. It's by his waist, Philly shell-like. He's going to be trying to do that interesting thing that he does where he keeps that hand down and he tries to control the, the hand here. Nothing explicitly wrong with the theory of what he's trying to accomplish here. But because of the fact that his left hand is low, it stops him from really being able to use the control that he has of the line with his right shoulder and his right hand to make an attack with his left hand. Okay, and as we go uh, through, we're going to talk about that, but I just want you guys to pay attention to some of those patterns in here. As Tiffimo Lopez, you know, getting a good workout. You know, doing some really good stuff. Again, having a very active beat. It's very important that you're shadow boxing. You don't really take breaks. That you have con at the bare minimum, you just have a constant movement for three minutes, um, because that's what a fight is. Bare minimum, right? And then you just slowly start adding boxing to that motion or to that idea. Now, as we take a look at his guard, we take a look at some of the stuff that he's doing. What are the other things that we notice about his work? There's actually almost no head movement, okay? I, we see his head dip there a little bit, but he'll go on long stints where he'll do stuff like this, and he can't fight out of that position. A <clears throat> little bit of head movement here, a little bit of that whatever that is. <laughs> punch, no head movement. Guard, punch, head movement after. But a lot of times, he'll just sit on the line and throw combinations and stuff, and we're going to see that on the mitts. And I actually kind of want to jump over there <clears throat> to the mitts here and I want to talk about a few ideas number one he's very good at going from left to right but not again like I was saying going from right to left and again if we notice the position that his left hand is going to be in in the times when he throws his right hand on the mitts again it's not always going to be in a position where it's ready to block a punch or throw a punch okay now this becomes extremely uh it, it becomes much, much, much more apparent when he does the Mayweather mitt style stuff. Now, real quick, when you see this stuff, same side attack. Again, it's going to be same side blocks, boom. But again, not a lot going right to left, right? Right? It's good stuff. It's fast. It's snappy. But not everything that he's doing here uh, is going to be, um, you know, fight fight translatable now another thing i want to talk about again look at his position while he's waiting here just like we talked about one of the things that's wrong with Tio is it's very easy to interact with him and we're going to go over the film uh, let's go ahead and do that right now let's go ahead and talk about that we've got a whole ton of clips here but here he is putting pressure on jermaine ortiz again with that rear hand and again look at where his left hand is OK, it's excellent that he can make it across the line, but he keep be keeping his left hand there. It also makes it harder for him to even throw his straight right hand, because from this position, there's nothing blocking him or the lines between him and Ortiz's face. He should be able to lunge at him with a right hand, a straight right hand and catch him. 
but because of his hand positioning, he's not really going to be able to move into these positions. As you see, he moves his left hand away, and now he can expose and he can bring his weight away from him and throw that 1-1-2 one, one, or that, that uh, left shoulder, right shoulder combo. Now, again, when he makes it to this position onto the front foot, he's no longer any good going from the right shoulder to the left shoulder as apparent by Jermaine Ortiz's ability to interact with him with his jab after. Right? And again, Tio was in a perfect position to come back with his own hook. Now, Tio's hands. He's probing a little bit here. His hands are low. He's not guarding the line. Lead hand control is the bare minimum in the open stance. Just being able to control that line and stop your opponent from having a direct line of contact between you, you and your hand and their hand. Because at a high level, look at these guys. Look at how jacked they are. Look at how fast they are. And it's very, very, very difficult to just fight someone on athleticism alone. And by not having your hands up, not being able to guard your opponent's line or guard your line from your opponent's hands, it forces you to overreact to things, it forces you to give up more space. It, while you're trying to put pressure on your opponent, it becomes increasingly more difficult to do that because it's so easy to get them to push you off the line. Now, again, trying to come forward with that similar style. The rear hand is up, and again, he just interacted with this punch. That's not even a great way to do it, but he's going with the right shoulder control with the right hand, and then he moves with the left shoulder, and we saw the left shoulder pop right there, but he didn't throw a left hand. He didn't throw a hook. In spite of the fact that he, maintained, he gained control of the line with the right hand and then could have moved into a left hook, he didn't. He moved into this position, and again, throws the right hand here. And again, comes back with the left shoulder. Look at how wide open Jermaine Ortiz would be for a left hook here. Again, Teofimo Lopez, because of this mitt style, we're going to talk about it, we're going to see, we're going to show it in the mitts. Um, he just doesn't have his guard up in a position. Again, see how that left hand, that Philly shell is there. He can't, in spite of the fact that that was a perfect control, he caught the jab with the, his rear hand. He could have come back and, uh, just like Guillermo Rigondeaux would do, control with the rear hand and smack with the hook. Uh, one of my favorite clips, again, coming back with this shot here. Got him. Excellent shot here. Now, watch him bring that left shoulder across the line. He could have thrown another left hook here. Again, Tiafima Lopez, because of the way that he trains the mitts, because of the way that he does that stuff, uh, and the way that he shadow boxes and all that stuff, he doesn't really open himself and allow himself the opportunity to throw the, the left hook very well. Now, again, getting the disposition, perfect probe, got his opponent to react to him. He's going to roll under the line. He could have been he could have been throwing a left hook here as well. He can even finish that roll, and he could be finishing with a left hook again right here. But again, nothing. He's so weak from that from the left side of the line. He doesn't really have an, a way to attack his opponent. And when he makes it to this position, it becomes really easy to interact with him. <laughs> again, push him off of his line, stop him from being able to build up momentum and push um, Jermaine Ortiz to the ropes. And again. Sometimes Teofimo Lopez does have that leaping hook. Um, sometimes he does have some stuff. But a lot of times he'll get to this position, this very, very, very terrible position, and he won't be able to make any offense out of it. Again, it, when we, he gets to that position, he could be letting a straight right hand go. Jermaine Ortiz doesn't even have his guard up. Teofimo Lopez is not even taking advantage of the same rules that are condemning him to just chasing this guy around. Now, again, getting into that position... <clears throat> Control, control, two. Again, very, very, very good at fighting from the left side to the right side. But again, once he makes it to this position, where's that left hook? Where's his ability to come back with the shot? Again, not really looking to interact, not really able to go from that side to that side. In spite of the fact that he's does have a really good move here, I just wanted to include this one. Because it's not like he's like a fish out of water, right? In the first round, he does an excellent job of fainting, controlling Ortiz, getting him to interact with him, blocking that shot, coming back with this little hook here. Um, now, pay attention. Look at his structure. He didn't really move his head. Okay, and we're going to talk about that again a lot of times because Teofimo Lopez a lot of times does look like he has good head movement, but he comes forward in this straight line. And again, because his hands are at his waist when he comes forward with this, tries to come in with the one-two, Ortiz has a direct line when they both explode and they both try, right? Ortiz goes, oh, shit, something's coming when Teofimo Lopez is like, I'm going to spring on him with the one, two. Because his hand is low, there's a direct line. He's able to intercept him very easily and, again, break his momentum, stop him from being able to come forward. 
Now, again, Tio controlling the line here in perfect position. Where's his left hand? Why does he not have his left hand in a position to strike the line? Why is it in this position here? Again, it's just a fundamental flaw. It's just a fundamental error in the way that he deems what he's supposed to be doing. And again, Ortiz right there crossed his line. Control, control. He had control of the line. He brought, was able to bring his weight. Sandor Martin would be knocking Tiafimo Lopez down with this. You guys remember that? This is the exact same reason why Teal's getting dropped by that move as well. Because, again, he doesn't practice guarding the line. He doesn't practice. Now, I'm not saying you have to do it all the time, right? But there are times in the fights where you have to be able to fight with your hands up and guarding the line. Now, real quick, his left hand is up. Why isn't his right hand up? Again, controlling. He got intercepted while he was controlling space with that, right? Why is he not able to fight out of that position? Look at how close his opponent was to him. He's one snap away. <clears throat> control again right no hooks no nothing now again in this position coming down with the left shoulder no left hook in this position just eating punches again all this stuff is really bad for him and, and again at a high level right Teofimo Lopez at the moment is kind of lucky that Jermaine Ortiz in spite of the fact that he's ripped he's jacked he's not really a puncher Right? He's not really, he doesn't really have power. His base is not very good. Uh, his structure, when he creates a structure to strike, he doesn't utilize his structure very well. Uh, and he's a lot of times, you know, very similar in, in uh, theory to Devin Haney. You know, and I, I, it's very interesting because it, it creates a lot of very interesting parallels uh, because these are all similar things that uh, Devin Haney could, again, look at him try to counter, but his left hand is just a little, a tad bit too low. Getting to this position here, crossing the line with the rear hand, getting into that same position. Boom. He intercepts the attack, tries to counter with his left but can't get it up over Ortiz's shot, and Ortiz is able to, again, intercept him and keep him off the line. Now, again, the mitt work, when he's in these positions, he's waiting. His hands are not really up. He has to rely on a quick twitch and a catch, right? He has to rely on going snap, snap, and making two moves. He's not really guarding the line. He doesn't really... And again, while some of these drills... They're great. You want to work them. You want to drill them and stuff. Um, some of those kind of bad habit things. Now, as we see here, this stuff, not a lot of actual head movement here. Then again, look at the positioning when he's punching here of his hands, right? Notice the right hand is high. The left hand is low. Look at the positioning of the mitts here with what they're doing, okay? This is another one of the reasons why Tifimo Lopez doesn't always move his head. I know when he actually strikes people, he does slam his head around. But when he's moving around and he's just using his active guard, if he's not doing the, I'll say the goofy stuff, you know, but he doesn't have his hands up in these positions. It's not goofy, right? Some of it, you know, he needs to work on his positioning a little bit because um, he moves too far through some positions um, and doesn't move far enough in some <clears throat> But because of these drills here, we can see that his left hand is so low, it's not really in a position to really be striking the line um, and, and fighting from a front foot position uh, in a position one, or rather, I'll say, fighting from the left side of the line, okay? And, and I don't really like just, you know, the, the terminology front foot, back foot. Um, I think uh, I like to say, and I like to teach my fighters uh, the left side of the line or the right side of the line, that idea is more important. Uh, but on the, he doesn't have a way to really fight on the right side of the line once he gets into those positions. Notice in, in his mitt work here, is he making it to any of those positions? When he brings that right hand forward and he's going through those little, those little movements, right? When he does the catch and counter, I think he might actually be doing some more catch and counter stuff here <clears throat> let's see but when he does those catch and counters it's always same side none of it goes right side to the left side and we can see when he's doing the mitts here and he's actually doing his striking and moving through he's not really playing that game with his with his coach either he's not practicing those moves and then moving into punches 
And again, all this stuff has a dramatic effect, these patterns that he's so much more prepared to play with on the line. Again, where's the when he's rolling under, right? I'm not like the biggest fan of that move in particular. I think there are other better moves, um, more efficient things to practice. But he's making it to this position here. And then again, when he comes back, there's no left hook, right? And again, I'm not saying you have to have a left hook all the time, right? But fundamentally, there's a massive portion of Tifima Lopez's line in in what I call the track uh, uh, that he's not using, okay? And if you guys are familiar with my track theory <clears throat> and uh, my track drills, um, you'll understand. If you're not, get the Fouts Boxing Combat System. Check it out. <clears throat> it's a complete entire combat system to teach you how to fight and do all this stuff without a coach, okay? To teach you all the patterns. You'll be able to put it together. There has film studies in there to teach you to understand what's going on if you're familiar with my film studies as well. Uh, but again, not fighting right to left mostly. And again, check these stepping jabs out. Ugh, one of the reasons why he kind of leaps all the time. When we make it to this position, if we're coming forward, that could have been a left hook, right? Why is he not practicing a left hook? Now, again, practicing a little bit of fake stuff here. Like, you're not really doing stuff like this in the fight. Now, real quick, we see that move there. I just want to point this out real quick. We see them kind of fiddling around with that stuff. We see him still getting hit with shots like that. Even though he's on the ropes, boom, here. Is he seeing that shot coming? That's the shot that he was just practicing, right, in that position. And he's still, I know, I don't think actually he gets hit with it. Let's watch it one more time just to make sure. Yes, clean hit. Push, bump some, boom. Oh, it's so close. His gloves on his face. He gets them, but Ortiz's not really a puncher. But anyway, practicing kind of fake stuff on the mitts, you know, practicing this, this shoulder roll stuff, but... Look at the position, right? When when Ortiz is coming with this shot, if he's rolling with it, he could be landing a left hook, right? When he's in this position and they're they're in the closed stance right now, right? Ortiz is coming with that shot. Teal's turning away with it. He's pulling his weight ish, right? But see how that left shoulder comes up? He could be throwing a left hook. What's he doing on the mitts here? Not throwing left hooks, right? Not really practicing attacking the line or defending. Hands are low. Again, all that stuff winds up being this athletic stuff, right? Anyway. Even this one. Um, anyway. Um, again, it's really important that you have a full system of combat. Uh, Tio is an incredible athlete. He's really strong. He's really fast. He's really hard to fight. Um and, you know, very similar to Progray, right? Progray was that guy who was trying to come in with the pool counter, too. Um, the only difference is Teal can cover a lot of ground with his 1-2. Teal's really fast. Um, when you think about the matchup between him and Haney. Um, but Progray had a very similar problem where he wasn't able to use his right hook. And he didn't really have a right hook. And if Teofimo Lopez doesn't have a left hook against Devin Haney, I don't know that... that uh, that just his right hand is going to be good enough. I don't think that, um, obviously, the guy that he fought, Jermaine Ortiz, is not as good as Devin Haney. He's not bad. He's a pretty good fighter. He's pretty fast. He's, I don't want to say like a good fighter, but he understands a little bit of the things that he's not supposed to be doing, right? Don't be standing on the line and doing nothing. He doesn't know exactly what to do or how to control the line, how to catch and block punches very well and interact with his opponent if he's not just beating them down, right? When he's fighting guys like <clears> – I think it was Larry Merchant who said a long time ago, a lot of times when guys get in the ring with guys who are as fast as them, they've never been in the ring with someone as fast as them before, and it throws them off. It changes the way that they fight. Now they have to fight like they're like the worst fighter. You know, and they fight more scared, and there's less opportunities, there's less, you know. And uh, Jermaine Ortiz might be a guy who fights a little bit better when he's better than his opponent, right? The holes are easier to find. The 
uh, on your opponent and the the holes that you have, they don't matter as much. They don't matter because the guy's not fast enough, you know. And like similar with Devin Haney, right? We can all see that there are flaws. There are times where he might get hit clean and get hit hard. You know, not so much in the pro gray fight. There were a lot of pool counters. For whatever reason, he only went to the body. He never switched it up and went to the head. Um, so he didn't get hit too many times in the head in that fight. Uh, but usually, Devin Haney gets hit clean in the face. You know, he gets hit clean hard. Um, sometimes people are able to bridge the gap or create a timing where the, the extra athleticism that he has doesn't really matter, you know? Um, but I don't know. In, in, as far as, you know, Haney versus... Uh, Tiafimo Lopez, because I don't think Devin Haney's all of a sudden going to switch and come out and fight him out southpaw. And I think Tiafimo Lopez is maybe significantly better at fighting uh, right-handed fighters than left-handed fighters. Um, I think that that he's... Man, I don't want to say anything too quick, but, you know, I I think that he is better and more dangerous. You know, I think that he gets the games better, but I'll have to do the film study if they ever wind up fighting. I mean, we got Ryan versus uh, Haney first, and that's going to be really interesting. That's going to be really, really interesting. So anyway, um, yeah, we fight how we train. Uh, the drills and stuff that he practices in these, like these Mayweather moments, right? Here's his little pendulum power drill. I love it. Um, he could still make it better. There's still stuff that he's not doing correctly in these motions here. <clears throat> oh, that was it. <laughs> um, but in particular, you know, I just want you guys to see that it's these, the Mayweather style pad drill thing that he's doing here that has such a huge, such a huge dramatic bad impact on what he's doing and what he's supposed to be doing, you know? And uh, I do want to say, like, there's stuff about what he's doing that's important, but he doesn't need to be practicing these kinds of patterns with his coach here. He, if he needs this pace and this rhythm, he could do this by himself on the heavy back. He could do this by himself on the double end back. He could do this by himself shadow boxing, right? There's not really that much that his coach is really giving him here. You know, he's a, you know, uh, especially because, like, this is not really that good of stuff, you know. Um, again, it does help a lot in the beginning just, again, just to move, just to get going, just to get your pace up, you know. Um, but eventually you got to kind of iron this all this stuff out and make it much more like boxing than just, like, this interesting pad workout now i know mayweather gets a lot of credit for his pad workout but and his defense but how many times do you ever see mayweather block punches he pulls and ducks but he doesn't pull like getting down right that's the duck because he doesn't stay legal target and then his pull is that lean straight back so he leans straight back and he ducks below the waist but he doesn't really catch and block punches in spite of the fact right that we see uh, that those types of motions are practiced here with those shoulder taps, right? Anyway, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I think Tiafimo Lopez, man, he needs to figure some of this stuff out before he fights Devin Haney. Um, yeah, because Devin Haney showed that he can, he can move. And he doesn't have to hold and, you know, hold and duck below the waist. He didn't have to. He still moved and circled a lot, but he did find solid, clean punches to land. Stuff every round where you're like, ooh, that's a good one. Okay, nice. And it's really important that you're actually actively trying to score good punches. Um, and Jermaine Ortiz was not trying to do that. Um, he was just trying to run and move and, you know, kind of maybe catch Teal a little bit off guard, but not try to hurt him, not try to not try to really score any points or make it look like he's winning a fight, you know, but it was, 
you know, for the most part, pretty clean, pretty pretty obvious that he Devin Haney beat uh Pro Gray. Um Yeah. Anyway. Um later guys.